Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the singleton design pattern. It is one of the easier design patterns to implement, however, the bulk of the complexity comes when you're actually trying to use it in the real world because you have multiprocessor machines and then how do you translate that singleton into microservices scenario and that's primarily what we're going to look at so starting from the basic kind of working up to a th theoretical microservices example uh, that i have prepared as well starting real simple memory cache something that you want a singleton you don't want two memory caches if a process accesses one memory cache, you get rid of the instance, the cache gets uh, annihilated, and then you try to create the cache again and it's not there. What's the point of the cache that just gets busted after you use it every single time? You want it to persist, right? So we create a single instance and we achieve that by having a static field on a class, right? So no matter how many memory cache instances you create, they all have the same value in the static instance field. We do not allow to create a memory cache by newing up the object. We make the constructor private, right? New memory cache. This is not allowed because yeah, the constructor is private. Okay. Uh, we create a static method, which we can then call on the memory cache object. And uh, this basically checks, is our static instance null? If uh, not, create a memory cache. And because we we define the creation process from within the singleton, it has access to the constructor. So this is where we new up the object. We assign it to the instance and this clause then returns the memory cache. That's pretty much it. Every other time the create is called, it's just going to return the instance because it is no longer null. So when we call create, uh, create gets outputted. We can then print this out a bunch of times and no matter how many times we call create after this, the constructor is no longer called, okay? So this is not an ideal solution because as I said, the real world looks much different where you have a multi-threaded environment. Now, uh, I have a CPU with eight logical processors. So I have eight threads that can run in true parallel without context switching between threads, right? So I can do something along the lines of spinning up eight tasks and uh, basically running them all in parallel and uh, Having the same implementation here, you will see that it is recreating the memory cache on e each thread because there is no locking here. There is no synchronization, right? And uh, again, if I, if I well, really bump the number up to something like 12, uh, where I don't get true parallelism between my th uh, threads, you can see it stops around eight, which is the number of my processors. Otherwise there's context switching. So one thread will run, start executing the next thread. It will have to bump it up, but it, it depends on how the thread pool manages it and don't want to go too much into threads and tasks. I have the asynchronous video. If you want to go watch that, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, how can we solve this asynchronous problem? So no matter how many threads or tasks we have, right, you can get CPUs in the cloud that have like 96 uh, processors or cores or whatnot. And uh, I mean, at that point, you might as well have like uh, 200 here and they're all like, get, you get 200 memory cache instances, right? So we want to make sure that only one memory cache instance gets created. Uh, let's go ahead. I will duplicate this workspace and uh, what I will do is show you an implementation of, uh, well, how can you synchronize this really? First thing that you can do is you can implement a static constructor. And uh, now we can just assign the memory cache in the static constructor. We no longer need this because we're always going to return the instance. And now the instance only gets created once. So that's the static constructor. The whole thing about static uh, about the static constructor. As soon as your application starts, it runs the static constructor. Okay. The downfall here is if you have a thousand uh, singletons, they all have a static constructor, and it takes some time to spin them up. And that could be very much the case in the cloud environment. Your virtual machines may be getting spun up every so often. So. Let's say you are experiencing a big load on five virtual machines. So you're getting about 80% CPU usage. That is around the time when you want to spin up new, uh, new virtual machines. And if you have a lot of uh, static constructors, when you, once you spin up the new virtual machine with your application, it's gonna start loading all these static constructors before your application starts. So you're depending on how complex the construction process is, it may take like five, 10 minutes more or your actual application to start working. But again, this depends on what your singletons are actually doing. Uh, generally, if you don't have too many static constructors, 
it's not a pro not not a big problem and this generally gets solved by lazy evaluation so uh, yep that's the first solution static constructor let's again copy this uh, workspace here again and uh, this time we're gonna take a look at locking so let's copy this we will create something like object we'll say cache lock world new object oh, no, get the constructor let's say if instance is null uh, then we want to start creating our object so we want to do this thing here now what we want to use is we want to use the cache lock so we don't want multiple threads to enter this uh, scope of execution so at the moment we've basically just rewritten the function to be a little bit more verbose rather than uh, the null check operation that C-sharp gives us. Now what we want to do is we want to restrict execution flow into this uh, block of code. Uh, C-sharp gives you a lock statement, which you can basically lock a object. So it looks something like this. So once, the, uh, once basically 10 threads are gonna come in through the door and they're all gonna be like, I'm trying to instantiate the memory cache. The lock basically allows only one thread to lock the object i don't know what actually happens internally in the code and in memory we can just assume that the internals are going to guarantee that only one process of execution is going to be inside this scope okay and once we exit it the next one can enter so what we want to avoid at this point is once the first thread or some process of, uh, of execution is going to enter here it's going to assign the object and it's going to leave the next one will come in it's going to reassign the object and it's going to leave Okay, at this point, we just want to go ahead and perform the check again. Okay, so once the first one comes in, it still sees that it's null, it assigns it, it leaves and uh, returns the instance. We can really return the instance right here as well. Uh, the second one comes in because it's already queued up. There's like 10 queued up here. The second one comes in and sees, oh, instance has, is not actually null anymore because the, the previous one has assigned it. So then it exits and goes ahead and uses the returns the instance from here. And once it exits the lock statement, the next one comes in and the process repeats. It doesn't reassign the instance again and again. So in our situation here, uh, we'll not save it just yet. Again, uh, due to the locking, we do only get one instance created here, right? So it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter how many threads we'll run it on. There is, a, uh, there is a slight blocking of threads there, although I will not go through the following example. I will just mention it. You can watch my semaphore video if you don't know how semaphores work. But this lock operation might as well be replaced with an asynchronous action to a semaphore. Instead of a lock, we create a static semaphore slim and wait and release and get synchronized to creation of the memory cache instance that way. Uh, let's take a look at a scenario where we have solved the instantiation problem. Now we have to solve a problem where we have a single instance and it is important that when we read from our memory cache, it is synchronized. The scenario that I'm describing here is very similar to just how we go ahead and run the creation process of our memory cache. What we do here is again, we do the creation of our cache here. So we store it in the C variable. And I've got a couple of methods here that I've added. I have uh, the creation uh, of the instance synchronized by locks. And then I just have a dictionary here, not, not concurrent one. Uh, let's not worry about that. What we got here now is we just want to check if uh, the cache contains a key and uh, it, that we want to be able to write a key. Because uh, the problem that I'm trying to solve here is that I have a computer with many processors. There are a bunch of tasks on the computer that periodically check different places for jobs to do. Let's, so let's say we are looking at a file location. We're going to see new files there and then we're going to do something. Scaling the videos, processing CSV files, whatever you want. So what happens is we create the cache and before performing the big operation, we want a task, a thread, a thing that is currently trying to check and process it. It goes to check the file and you can see here we're reading contains, right? So it checks the file name, it goes to the cache and it says, right, do we have this thing currently being processed? The cache will go, no. So then, all right, we do, we're not currently processing the thing. And then it's gonna say, right, I want to start processing it. In between here, during this space, right? What happens is a different task is going to do the same thing. It's gonna look at the same task, it's gonna 
take a look at it and it's going to ask the cache, do we have this job currently running? The cache is going to say no. And then it enter enters the if statement ag again as well. And again, I, get, I have like 10 threads here. And what is going to happen is if I run it, all of these threads are going to execute the big operation, all right, which is going to take up a bunch of resources. I know this is not a very good example because you have a bunch of tasks polling the same bucket or location or different locations rather than one process polling those locations and then scheduling the tasks. This is just an example of the problems that you can run into and how to solve them, okay? So again, we have a memory cache and this read, write, operations are not synchronized. We are not getting synchronization through our singleton. We can implement synchronized access through from within the task by sharing a semaphore and not letting more than one task access uh, the singleton, or we can do something within the cache to synchronize it. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement something similar to how we create the lock. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, copy this lock here. I'm gonna say, acquire key. So I am just going to lock the whole thing straight away. So this is a synchronized access to the memory cache. What I want to do now is I want to check and perform this uh, operation synchronously. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it here. I will check if it contains the job that I'm looking for. If it doesn't contain it, that is when we want to write to the cache to indicate that we're now processing this job. So I'm going to take the write operation. I'm going to remove the not flag because truthy is a little bit easier to understand. We're going to put the right here. We're going to omit the big operation here and we're just going to return true. Make sure the thing is a Boolean and sorry, it will be false here. So if it already contains here, we do not acquire anything. If the job is already in our cache, we are performing it. Okay, so we exit. If we have written something, so that means we have acquired a job, we're then going to return false. All right, now what we can do is we can run the acquire key here. If we manage to acquire this key, we're going to perform a big operation. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this. Obviously nothing happens. Uh, yeah, because you got to return true when you acquire the key, right? So there it is. Let's go ahead and run this again. And there we go. So we have the synchronization around creation of the memory cache and then certain operations within the cache should be synchronized as well. Uh, this is particularly useful to know how to do if you have a distributed locking or distribute a cache where we have multiple virtual machines here and uh, they all have a singleton cache instance, right? A distributed cache. And uh, the thing that we're trying to do is if we're trying to achieve synchronization of uh, these machines pulling a bucket for jobs, uh, again, I understand that there could be a queue or a pop sub queue that sort of synchronizes and distributes uh, the jobs between machines. Uh, there will still be a situation where multiple things are polling the same thing or getting data from multiple sources and uh, they want to know should they keep getting more data and at that point you are going to have some kind of single instance some kind of cache database whatever that is going to act as that gate should you go do that thing because you have multiple things trying to do the same thing okay so the bad situation that you don't want to end up in is you don't want to perform a read operation from Redis cache. Do we have this key? If not, write it. Because in this space, when we read and write, what can happen is the other instances are going to do the same. The other instances are going to perform the read at the same time, and then they're all going to write as well. And then everybody's just gonna go into the bucket and you're not performing your operations efficiently anymore. What Redis does provide is it gives you a set NX option, which is basically set if doesn't exist. In this case, if all three machines go and try to write the value of the job, only one is going to return successful. So this is going to get okay. This is going to get no. And this one is going to get no. Okay. So that is how Redis solves this problem. They have a special command that you can perform. And then in that scenario, only this machine goes to the bucket, picks it up. The other bo boxes know that this job is currently being executed. And then there is a whole different story where you have multiple instances of Redis and the whole cluster of the cache acts as a distributed cache singleton. But uh, we're not going to talk about that in this video. This will be it for this video. Hopefully the main takeaway that I want for you here is that if you're good at creating abstractions on the code level on one computer, you're going to be good in a microservices scenario as well. Whoa.
Whoa, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store. So if you do want to support me, don't just donate, buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.